Hi guys, welcome to our Easter tall porch sign. Um, I've got them in two colors. We're gonna talk about how to choose your colors, how to not have your knots bleed out and under. We're gonna show you how to fill in areas without stencils and how to do your lettering with a roller. So there's a lot in this video. It goes all the way to the very end. You're gonna wanna stick around and uh, you've got a lot to learn here. All right, guys, when you are getting started with your tall porch signs, you're gonna to need to know how to prep. I have a very good example here that will show you exactly why you need to know this bit. So on this board, you see all of these knots. That is intrinsic to pine. That's where the limb is growing out of the tree trunk, and that is why those form. Okay, on this board, you don't see any of the knots that were there, and on this board, notice here, here, um, here, the yellow, they, they bleed out into the paint and they come to the surface of the paint. On this board, this has been prepared correctly. And so today, in just a second, I'm gonna show you how to prepare this board so it will behave like this board. Here we go. All right, guys, so we have a lot of knots on this board. Um, a couple tips on how to get the lumber for your project. Um, you can recycle barn wood, you can do some of those kinds of things. Um, you can put multiple boards together to keep your wood cost low. If you have scrap laying around, you could have irregular ends to your boards. Lots of different ways you can do it. I just go get a piece of um, 12 inch, almost 12 inch, um, lumber and I ask the people at the lumber yard to cut it for me. And then they rip it and cut it and do the thing. I'll show you how to get rid of the raw, yucky edge. And um, that just makes it really easy. We are going to block these knots from bleeding through because this is going to be a white project. If this was going to be made with black like the other example that I have, um, I probably would not block these unless there was a white area in which case you don't want um, you know, that bleeding through. So best case, probably just go ahead and block all of the knots on your boards when you're using these kinds of boards. Okay, so we're gonna use our opener and open our stuff. This has been sitting and it is unmixed. Um, on the back end of your paint brushes, there's a wonderful thing called a mixing stick. So you can dip that right on in there. Get that kind of mixed up. This product is called Bullseye, or yeah, Bullseye um, Shellac. And um, it is wonderful for blocking the staining of the knots. All right, so cleanup is with ammonia and water. I don't wanna go get ammonia. Um, and so I'm just gonna use this as my brush and this as my glove. This is just a full top baggie. And then I can just apply this product to the knotty knots and then let it dry. All the knots are coated. Now I could flip it over and do the back side as well so that, that my back side of my board is pre prepared for me to paint something else on the back so I can just turn it around when it's not the Easter season and I'll have two for the price of one. How awesome is that? All right, now let's talk about how this, how rough this board is. Man, they almost chewed that up. So what I have is I have two sanding blocks that I always keep on my paint table. One has a 120 grit, which is really fine. That takes like the raised edges of my stencil away. That way things don't feel and look stenciled. Um, a lot of stencil companies use a thick, thick, thick stencil material like 10 mil. And what happens is your paint levels within the stencil material and that makes it a very raised, very crafty looking kind of project. Ours are 7.5, it seems to be about the perfect um, thickness, but if you wanna flatten those out, this is the perfect thing to do that. And then this is a 60 grit, and that's really got a gnarly, um, hard finish. I use this for distressing and all of that. Also knocks the wood um, chewing <laughs> off the end of this board. So that'll just knock right on back. So first we get rid of it all right down to the side, and then we can lighten that up just slightly and feather that in. It's 
always gonna be just a little bit chipped like that. What you could do is you could get some wood filler if you really can't stand that look and um, you could fill it in. Um, I think because these are just tall porch signs and it's not hanging on a wall or something like that, I would not bother in this case. Um, these are affiliate links. Um, we have a whole blog post with all of our affiliate links on our website, um, which is studior12.com. And um, you can go and see and shop from all the tools that we use. Um, we don't use anything that we don't love. So everything is like honestly recommended. Okay, we are ready to get started painting. All right, so my um, bullseye stuff is dry on the knots. If you have any raised and you don't like any of the raised things, that's when you can take that 120 grit sandpaper and just knock it back. Okay, I think everybody's pretty happy. I'm gonna use a roller today to base coat my board because that just goes so much faster. Um, after I'm done, I put it in a plastic baggie and put it off to the side. White is a really common color, so I like to keep a white roller um, available, a white wet roller available. So we're gonna go into our roller and get this over here. There is a method to loading your brush with loading your roller. Um, you get it started, and I'm just on some flat white palette paper. Um, is my preferred. If you run on a paper plate or something like that, the edges really get in, in the way of your roller. So once you get it kind of on the roller, you want to push your roller to squish the paint inside of the roller so that you're not just like picking it up and being super sloppy with it. You want a nice even application. If you apply thin, even coats instead of thick coats, then your paint will dry way faster and you have to repeat the coats, but it just goes much better. You don't end up with ridges. A lot of good reasons to do thin coats. <clears throat> so here we go. So just roll, 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 roll your paint. All right, right here on these ends <clears throat> where that was really rough, you can see that it's harder to get your paint in there. So you could do a couple of things. You can push on it with, um, push on the edge and that will push it in. Or you could pick up a foam brush or you could pick up just a regular paint brush and brush it in. So those are ways that you can get rid of that effect. When I'm rolling and I'm going to the edge, if I l let my roller fall over, I'm going to paint this edge. If I mean to paint the edge, that's not a problem. If I don't want the edge painted, I will turn my roller sideways and I'll push on the nose of it slightly so that the back end isn't squishing paint over the edge. So it's a really good way to control the roll. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. Rather than pushing heavy right here, I'm going to push heavier here so I don't squish over my edge. All right, now I've got one whole coat on this and you can see that it's not solid yet, but guess what? The top is already dry. So by the time I get down to the bottom, the top is dry and I can begin again. So two coats. All right, guys, I've got a second coat on here. And if you notice, you can still see the knots and that's not because they're bleeding under, it's just because they're really dark and this is a really light color and white doesn't always coat perfectly. So um, what you'll do is you allow the board to dry and then you'll just do another coat on top of those knots. Something that you could do instead of putting just white on top is you could go in with a neutral gray before you get started with the white and undercoat them with a neutral gray. It's just as easy to coat them with the white. So then I'm gonna take my fold top baggies, which I really, really, really like the fold top. Um, they're still available at Walmart. Um, because they don't have the zipper, it rolls really evenly around my roller. The zip top ones do not work very well. So that just rolls perfectly smoothly and nicely. And then this will stay fresh for, we did one of our, um, I think one of our lives or one of our videos anyway, where we had, we showed the roller week after week after week and, um, and it stayed for, I think it was three or four weeks. So anyway, and we'll let this dry. Now let's talk about choosing colors. How do you choose colors when you're getting ready to paint? So I go on a search. Um, I use Pinterest. I use Google. Um, I use catalogs a lot. I use 
sometimes I get inspired by button collections. Um, this was a set for scrapbooking back in the day. Um, I think it was like 10, 15 years ago. And the colors just inspired me and made me happy. So this inspires a lot of choices that I will paint with. So you can get inspiration everywhere. But when you order from Studio R12 Stencils, um, you get a little catalog, um, at least currently. This is um, December of 2021. Look at all the beautiful palette choices that we have represented in here. Okay, so when you're here, and then look at, this is where I got the white idea. Um, it's so cute to do this just in all white like that, but I went snooping around and I found a black version. Look at how cute that is. Like, I love it. So today I'm gonna paint the white, um, but the black is lovely. But look at this wood grain one. So here's the cool thing, and you guys can put it in the chat if you'd like to see a video on it. I don't know how many people know what this is. This is a wood graining tool. And um, if you wanna see us do a video on that, if you wanna go ahead and leave a comment, drop a comment below. Also, if you have any questions about what we're doing, anything that needs to be clarified, we're here to answer your questions. So we're here for you, the um, stencil fan, right? But um, look at the wood grain on that with the different color um, lettering. I love that example too. So I just got really excited about how many different ways you could paint the bunny signs. Um, so let's get back to our project. All right, guys. So if you notice here on my example, there's a little bit of a drop shadow. Um, I'm not gonna drop shadow today, but if you wanna know how to drop shadow, we will put a link up above um, to a video that will show you how to do that, and then we'll show it in future. We do a lot of drop shadow. Um, so, but we are going to be masking using our multi-maskers to get around these um, detail areas, and I'll show you how to do that. So we're gonna get out our acrylic paint. Any acrylic paint will do. You want paper towels and you need some stencil brushes. Um, we prefer, 100% um, prefer, stenciling with our dome stencil brushes. They are magic, they will change your game. Um, you, there's ways to do the stenciling. You wanna use a dry paper towel, a dry brush. If you get these brushes wet, you can't use them until they dry to do stenciling. If you wanna do a different technique, you can do that. And dry paint, meaning that we haven't added any water to it. So I'm gonna get into that paint and pick up just a little smudge and then like 15 rolls on my paper towel. Get some glasses on. The multi-masker will sit in here in this cutout area and allow me to do this black edging without getting black paint in the middle of my little bunny ear. So you can do one of two things. You can tap. Tapping wears my arm out, so I don't like that. So I like swirling. Swirling's just a smoother effect as well. You're gonna need to move your multi-masker as you paint. Make sure you don't forget that step. And once again, stencils is a stenciling is a layers game. So you're gonna want to do thin, light coats and just repeat it after you get your thin, light coats on. And down here at the bottom. The multi-masker is amazing because it's super flexible. It's just made out of our mylar. You could actually use another stencil if you want, but we made it um, with a ruler down at the bottom and to have some organic shapes um, and some rugged shapes and curvy shapes and things like that. So it's just a natural fit for all your different shaped areas. <clears throat> you reload your brush as you need to, but when you reload your brush, always come over on the paper towel and always dry it back off. Okay, so we'll go in this side. Pick it up, be careful not to run it along your um, ear. You wanna lift it and move it so that you don't smear the paint that's on the multi-masker onto your project. Okay, and that's black. Switch my arm here. I wanna use some control because I'm really close to this edge. I have done double masking, so I'll show you what that looks like. So I can have both of these masked at the same time. So, 
advanced masking. Okay, and then we'll do the other ear. Um, I've got my stencil taped down. That's a really important um, rule to know about is if you don't tape your stencil down, it's very easy for that stencil to walk around. It's made out of slick mylar and that can cause problems. So I can peek and see if I like that dark enough or if I want another coat and I need another coat. That is the black right there. These letters are going to be in the pink. So we're gonna get our pink mixed up. My brush is gonna go ahead. I could put it in a baggie and it would um, and twist out the air so that it wouldn't dry. Um, or I can just plunk it in the water and use a different brush, which is what I'm going to do. Okay, so we're going to mix our pink. We've got a bubble gummy looking pink and we've got this kind of, um, I don't know, sachet looking kind of pink. And I know I haven't used pink in this room for a while, so always make sure you shake up your paint really well. Never hit your paint on the bottom of your hand. Um, I did that for like 20 years and my wrist was killing me, everything was killing me, and I'm looking down at my hand one time and I'm like, why does my hand hurt? And I was pounding the paint bottle and I was like, ah. So make sure you just shake and twist. Okay, spit out your paint. I think I'm gonna do equal parts of these colors. I'm gonna use an offset palette knife, which is on our website. Um, those are really awesome for mixing colors. Pink can get away from you. Um, so be careful with pink. It's really easy for it to be too pink. Okay, and then I wipe out and pinch between two paper towels and get a stencil brush. Okay, and I'm going to change my paper towel to a clean one since that black can be a little bit, um, a little bit strong. Okay, let's see if we like this color. So always wipe your paint off on your paper towel. Okay, so I'm gonna hold this stencil. Anytime you have a big opening, it's a good idea to hold the stencil down. Okay, so stay tuned because I'm gonna show you a really cool trick to stencil the letters fast. These areas are just big and open. And then on the black bunny, I'm on the black project over there, um, I'm gonna show you how to base inside. His tail is just white outlined because that's what the stencil had. But I think it'd be cuter if we had the whole thing filled in white. So I'm gonna show you how I would base coat that. You're gonna learn all the tricks today. Okay, so there's that. And I think I am gonna just use a baggie for that. So I would just twist that in my baggie like that and set that aside. Okay, now ready to learn how to base the letters fast. I don't like to spend a lot of time doing tedious things. So I always look for ways to do things easy. So we've got a link, affiliate link for these rollers. They're just a nice dense foam roller. Now I can pop the head off of my frame without tearing the bag and just make sure my bag is sealed in and I'm gonna pop on a roller and you guessed it we're gonna roll our letters our words and then notice that our words are um, my stencil is used um, we use this stencil to paint that project um, your stencils are kind of infinitely reusable so you don't have to worry about you know using it once and then you throw it away. You can use it and use it and use it and use it. Now this is a little bit different than um, than what we did to, for the background. We're going to load our roller or our brush a little bit differently. The other thing that I want to do is I want to make sure I am stuck down because the roller can pop the stencil up, and that can be a problem. So I'm going to add a little bit of insurance tape. Okay, 
make sure everything's really stuck. All right, we load our brush, our roller, into our paint, get it evenly coated just like before. And then we come over here on the paper towel and we offload just like the dome brushes. Anytime you're going through a stencil, you do not want a bunch of juicy paint. Okay. We've got a video on how to clean your stencils, so we will put a link up above for that. And see, this is not coating all the way, but look how fast it's going. I would be here for a month of Sundays. Offload. And then if you notice, when I said the measurement for the two colors, I said equal sizes. When, <clears throat> excuse me, when I put out the equal size, I used a blob size to compare. Now when I need to remix some more paint for the rest of this project, I know I did 50-50. So it's nice if you tell yourself, I did, you know, one chocolate chip of the bright pink and five chocolate chips of the other and then mix them all together. That gives you your little recipe, if you will. Because you can see I'm already gonna run out of paint. All right, and we keep going. All right, you notice that I only have a little piece of this letter right here. I'm going to peel this up and I'm just going to curl it back, I think, and stick that up there. Come here. And that is our L. So I can get that lined up. Cinch my tape in, get some insurance tape. And continue. So let's get our purple mixed and I'll also mix some more of my pink so I can continue with my lettering. And you guys, like it's not done yet, but it's, we've come a long way in a very quick time. You can get a porch sign done in an hour or two, um, just depending on, you know, how much TV you watch while you're painting or something. Stencils make painting things so much easier. I um, did the pattern painting for years and years and years and years. And I've got to tell you, I don't miss anything about it. Um, I don't like tracing and basing. I like to lay the stencil down and go. Okay, so we're gonna get out a deep purple, but the actual color that I'm going to make this is gonna be mixed with this pink. So I wanna do um, probably way too much purple there. I'm just gonna do one blob of that and then mix in um, some purple to it. So my recipe is a little bit loose. Those are equal blobs, but I think it's only gonna take just a little bit of the purple to make it happen. You always mix your dark color into your light color, piece by piece. If you mix your um, light color into your dark color, it will never win the battle. So you have to actually mix it dark into light because the dark will take over. And one thing, by mixing in this pink, it's kind of making that purple part of the same family as the pink. So when you mix two colors together, it makes a little family. Yeah. You know what? I think it's going to end up being equal, equal. You never, ever, ever know with paint. Um, how much pigment the manufacturer has put into the paint, um, which paints they skimp on the red paints almost never base coat very well or mix very well because they have, um, they have no pigment in them. It, the pigments are very expensive for red and yellow. And so manufacturers tend to not put so much in. And if you have stenciled red on your stencil, if you've used red paint on your stencil and you go over it with white, for whatever reason, I don't know if it's the red pigment, 
um, and how like how it's manufactured, but it will come off. It will reactivate with your white paint and it will make whatever you're painting pink. And so if you don't want that, you're gonna need to know how to wash your stencils. And you wash your stencil, and you can wash your stencil way later, like after it's dry and everything. All right, so we'll get that done. Get a brush and do our purple. Okay, so big long open line right here. Big long open line, but th things move, and I don't like that, so I'm just gonna hold that down. I am going to put a coat of stronger color right over the top of this because I don't think I got it dark enough. I'm gonna mix in just a touch of that. A little bit darker. And that'll be my second coat. If you don't like the color, you can go right over the top of it with something else. That's what I love about stenciling. You lay the stencil right back on it. I took a workshop at a make and take place that used um, the, the um, vinyl cutouts, like the Cricut cutouts and stuff like that. And um, the girl that I was painting with, she got her sign on there crooked. And when she got done, she knew she needed to fix it, but then when you take the thing off, it, all the sticky, it, the thing is destroyed. So you have to recut the whole thing and reweed the whole thing. Um, quite, quite horrible. Um, so this is nice because you can just set it back down if you want to reuse it. Mistake-free painting. Well, easy to fix mistake-free painting. Maybe we'll call it that. Okay, we're gonna get some pink. Do my second coats. Okay, now we'll take, nope, we've got the black tail. Let's make his little. Tail done. Be careful next to your edge. I could use my multi-masker just as insurance. I'm all about insurance today. I'm not sure what that's about. Um, while I'm doing this, make sure that you subscribe and um, and ring the bell here on YouTube so that you can um, get notified when we do more content. We do content twice a week right now. Um, so we've always got something going on and we're sometimes a little bit wild doing crazy experimental things. So you'll wanna know when we have new content. And if you love these Easter products or projects, make sure that you hop onto our website and see all the other stuff we have. We have something like 6,000 titles of stencils. I know we're over five, I think we're at six now. Okay, so I'm gonna untape that. And then I'll re-roll Mr. W here. And then we'll re-go into our pink brush. And Redo our ears. Okay, so why am I not masking now? You might be asking. So right now I'm not having to do as much um, coverage. So I'm not swirling as big. I can kind of get the second coat on there with littler movements. So I'm gonna hold that down and then notice I'm not swirling in a circle, I'm swirling up and down. That will keep me more contained. It will get my second coat on, and now I swirl in the middle. Okay, 
anything that you need to fix at the edges, like this didn't quite fill into the edge, believe it or not, 7.5 mil raises up your stencil, the, the surface just enough so that that roller, which is flat, can't get in that edge. So um, it really does matter how thick the stencil material is. Thicker is not better. So right here, right in the edges, little corners. And you want to do this before you remove your stencil so that you get a clean, um, easy coverage. Okay, so I'll put that down. And I need to check these letters to make sure I'm liking them. And I like them. Okay, so now we're going to peel everybody off. And we just have one more to go. Now is the time that you want to check for any bleeding. Um, if you off rolled, you should be okay. But it happens to everyone sometimes. So let's take a look at our lettering. I have just a hair of a little bit on these edges right here. So let me show you how I would fix that. So I'm going to take my click eraser, very satisfying sound, and I'm going to just get a little bit of water on there. And now I can go in right here with my click eraser and just erase that little bleed. Okay. The other way that I could do this is I could take white paint. The other day we were doing a video on how um, how to fix bleeds or something like that. Do you think I could bleed under? Couldn't do it. So you could take a flat brush or a round brush. And we have these on the website. Um, with artist brushes, be really careful about going to the craft store and buying artist brushes because they make them for a million different kinds of things and it's not always acrylic paint. So when you use them with acrylic paint, sometimes they're for watercolor and they're super floppy. They hold a lot of water, but they're not good for this kind of painting. So watch what you buy and um, that way you don't waste your money. Okay, so I'm gonna get into my white paint with my round brush and then I can just go anywhere where I see a little teeny bleed, I can just go get it. And I'm kind of upside down for doing the inside lanes. So you just Go grab anything you don't like. Now another way that you can fix this is when you're all finished and everything is dry, you can give it a light sanding and the sanding sometimes will take those little edges away. So if it's not visible from two feet away, I wouldn't call it any, I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about it. To do the flat brush, it's the same. You just load in a little bit of dry paint and you can go right next to your edge. Doop, doop. This doesn't work on pattern backgrounds, so you'll really want to watch when you're doing something that has a bunch of patterning, um, i.e. I'll put a link to this project in um, the, the thing above. This has got a whole bunch of patterning back here, back here. If I put words on top of that pattern, I wouldn't be able to easily match that color. Um, and then this is just a super cute little project with the vintage truck and um, I love that we did them in teal and blue and stuff like that. I think this is adorable. And then look at this little fringe here, isn't that wonderful? Super fun for a door hanger. Okay, last stencil. And then I chose to put the part of my board with all the heavy knots down at the bottom. I had, I kind of was, Kind of frustrating because my beaver that cut the board up there that chewed the end all up that was at the top but all my knots were on the other side so i chose to put the rough end at the top and keep all these down here because they'll be less noticeable because um, they're they're definitely open voids all right get all lined up i love that our stencils have that overlap so that it's easy to reline up. Okay, 
Put our tape down. This one even pre-taped. That's cool. Okay. Insurance tape. So what have I learned about how I'm painting today? I learned that I'm probably still being too heavy with my roller brush. And so I want to go ahead and roll a little bit longer on here so that I don't have I don't have that problem. The little bleeds, the little tiny baby bleeds. So I'll flip this over and really push. And then I'm not gonna push as hard here as well. Way less pressure. Hurrying never ever helps. But can you imagine how much time we save by using rollers? I would take those baby bleeds and fix them way more than um, spending two hours swirling. And then you have to do it all over again because you have to repeat. Okay, his little feetsies are pink and his outlines are black. So let's, I'm gonna do outlines first. Boy, this multi-masker just saves so much time. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Like you have to tape everything in other circumstances. It's so much nicer just to have a little piece that's just fitted to go in there. Knock, knock. Okay. Now you notice we didn't have any bleeding with our brush um, part of this project. So um, it's definitely the one that will prevent bleeding under the most. Okay, there's the black. Now I think I'm gonna need a little bit more of the purple. So I have to repeat with my purple what I did um, for the rest of the word. When you start layering paints, that's when things get a little bit weird. Okay. Every now and again, you will lose a couple of hairs with these. Um, it's such a thick, um, feral right here um, that all of the hairs don't get evenly glued um, but we haven't had a problem with these uh, being misbehaving so let's see what am I doing next we're gonna make pink footsies okay maybe mask maybe not some of the spacings are way closer than others What happens if I got a little bit of paint on my um, black or on my pink? Um, I could take a paper towel and I could put, put some water on it. I could wipe it back right away. Um, I could rebase right on top of it. Um, I could go back to white and white it out and re-black it or re-pink it if I needed to. There's a lot of things that you can do to fix little mistakes like that. So never fear, paint is the best eraser. into our roller. Remember, we don't have to get it into those edges because we're just gonna use our little brush to do that. Some of the skinnier areas are gonna be harder to um, get the roller paint into, and then I'm gonna stipple into that big open knot that we have right there. Okay, and then you know what I did? I put my black brush in the water and I still have a little bit of work to do. Good thing I have a lot of brushes. <laughs> anything down here don't think so one more coat of my purple
And then more of the black, more of the pink. That's next. Got to talk your way through these things. Okay, so now this will go much faster the second time. Okay, I think my pink is done, although that foot looks like he needs a little bit more help. Now we go into our purple. Ran out of towel. And then right over the top of him. Okay, I think that's good. And a little bit more pink. And are we ready to reveal? Let's get this into a bag. I like to store these with the frame off. And this is why, right here. Once you start getting paint dried on this frame, then what's going to happen is it's gonna be difficult to remove and it's gonna stop rolling evenly. So you wanna always take these off. Do not leave them on your frame. And they rust and they do all kinds of all kinds of crazy things. And then when you wash this out, you wanna go under cold running water and you know just squish it from the top and then when it runs clear, then you're clean. Do not put soap in this or you will have bubbles in your projects later. Okay, let's reveal. Oh, darn it. I need to do one more black. <laughs> oh, my lanta. Okay. This brush, okay. Somebody has left this brush sitting on their table and it has dried completely up. Now there is brush cleaner. Yeah. Okay, you wanna see a magic trick? Take this away, I still need that black, which is what started this conversation. Um, on a flat surface or something that is not um, super plasticky, plastic is can get eaten by this. This is um, Winsor Newton Brush Cleaner and Restorer. I'm gonna wipe my black out of that. And it's, this brush is hard, it's ridiculous. Watch this stuff. So I'm just gonna pour. A little bit, is that plastic there? Yeah. Pour a little bit on my palette, whoops. This is actually, um, it's like non-hazardous, low vapor, it's um, like it's all the good things. Okay, so watch what happens when we push this brush into this paint, this restorer. Oh, here comes some green paint. It just starts softening all that paint. And see my brush is now starting to be able to move. Isn't that wonderful? You don't wanna use this on foam brushes, you wanna use it on bristles. Okay, and then I would take this brush and I would put it um, on my ginger grater. We've got a how to clean brushes video as well. Use a ginger grater for these. And then I would just put the ginger grater with water and you could put a little bit of soap in this brush and then just make sure you rinse it out. But after that's flexible, you don't have a problem anymore. So now you've saved $6 on a brush. You paid probably $6 for this product, but there's a lot in there and it will save a lot of brushes. This is a very valuable tool to know about. Put that in there and we still have to get that black. Yeah, we have a lot of people that use our, uh, we have a, a um, make it, take it, like quirk and canvas, but stencils place here in our town. And so you never know which teacher isn't washing the brush or you never know which person that's painting is just laying it out. So um, we end up with some interesting things. <laughs> okay, now the reveal. Okay, here we go. Dun, dun, dun. Ta-da! Oh, that's so cute. Cuteness, cuteness overload. I love this. All right, so if you wanna fill in a piece of something that doesn't have a stencil fill in for it, the way that you could do it is a couple of ways. You could stencil it 
but you say, wait, we don't have a stencil for it, but you do have this wonderful edge. Okay, so what you could do is the same thing you do with the stencil. You're gonna pick up your paint, excuse me, and you can use your multi-masker. Okay, we're gonna go here. And this is probably the easiest way to do it. Um, or you could use a brush. And you only load a little bit of paint and then you just fill in and keep your layers flat. You have a little bit more control with the flat brush. And then right here, I think I'm just gonna connect him to there. Um, but if you don't know how to control a flat brush, then I think that you might want to go ahead and um, use the stencil brush in this case. It just is gonna depend on your area that you need to fill in on. Okay, so I'll just continue on. This is also how you could correct bridges if you don't like bridging to show. You can just base them out with a brush. So the other thing that I can do is I can go in and make my area bigger so that my stencil brush won't stomp outside of the lines. And then switch back to the stencil brush. Kind of gives it a little fuzzy look. I think we're gonna have a fuzzy tail. It's gonna be a little happy accident. Okay, now as I'm moving to the inside, I'm gonna leave that a little bit looser so it looks fuzzy, like it's fluffy. And we'll decide if we like it. If we don't like it, we'll just fill it in. Yeah, I think it's cute. Okay, so now I'll go up next to the edge. Oh, quickly, quickly. If you go out of the lines, the quicker you clean it up, the better off you are. If you get any little hairs like that, just brush them off when you're dry, and that way they don't mark as you're brushing them away, because they have paint in them. Okay, so just a little bit more blending that around. Super cute. Get some distance. Mm, I think it needs to be solid. I think it looks a little bullseye-y. So we'll make him solid. And notice I'm stippling now. I want full coverage, I'm going over black. I have all the reasons to stipple. This thing is like a diving board. It's got some flex here. Actually, I think it's just not flat. Most of your pine boards are not going to be completely flat. They're gonna have some warpage to them, so you're gonna to wanna to just know that and accept it. Um, we never use, we never leave our nice um, brushes are, are, we want a perfect shape brush. We never leave these in the water on their heads because they will bend and they will keep that shape. So you always rinse them out and tuck them right back in or leave them to the side and then you can clean your brush thoroughly. And do watch that video on how to clean your brushes because that will clear up a whole lot of things. All right, ta-da! Which one do you like best? Thanks so much for painting with me today. Make sure you do um, give us some hearts and give us some love and then subscribe and ring the bell and we'll see you in the next video.